Hi, this is John Hillbrands, owner of TheInfoSheets.com, and I'm going to use Corel Paint Shop Pro version X2 to make a tutorial on how to make a studio photograph from a stock photograph. So that's the stock photograph, and I just copied it, and I can delete it because I don't need it anymore. And now I'm going to paste it as a new layer, what I copied. And there we go, we have our two layers that we're going to be working on. So let's just use the pick tool so we get that outside box and we can move it around and we can also drag a corner to shrink it. So it has a few nice little features there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, background eraser tool and that's a nice little uh, tool that whatever is under the pin or the arrow will remove from within that circle. So if it hits a brown color it's going to remove a brown, if it hits yellow it'll remove the yellow. And you can set the tolerances so that it uh, can be more or less. But uh, to just to be sure, her hair color might match his, so I skipped it, and her shirt matches fairly close to his. So I'm just going to switch to a 100% eraser to finish that circle around so that I can select the center image, and then I'll work on that center image to get it a little more exact. So there we go, got rid of that. Now I'm going to use the freehand selection tool and it's a very fast way of going around something and when you don't need to be using one of their smart clickers and just freehand select there and every time I left click it'll connect to the line so I just go all the way down you go below the object it just makes it at the bottom of the object and click it when it's joined and then click the center and the little dancing lines go right to the object that I want now I'm going to copy that now I'm going to paste that as a new layer. And now I'll have a, a triple image there, so I'll just remove an eyeball off of that image I don't want. And now I'll go back and move it around a little bit. Uh, choose the pick tool again, because you really are picking the object, and you can actually move it around. So think of it as you're picking it up and moving it down there. This sized properly, so I don't have to resize. Now I'm going to use the Smart Edge tool. This is another selection tool. And it's set on Replace. It also has uh, the ability to be set on Add or Subtract. Um, we could add, obviously, because I don't have anything else selected. So adding to nothing would still give me something. Uh, replace will just mean it'll replace nothing with something. Hit the Delete key, and away it goes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Eraser. And I'm just going to freehand erase. Uh, it would be very hard for me to figure out what part of the hair to keep, so I'd rather just erase and just see what I want rather than trying to use some type of selection method. And it didn't do anything, and that's because I didn't undo that other selection. And by having everything unselected, it'll let me use the entire layer to, to work on. Um, when you have something selected, it wants you to keep within that selection box. And that will keep you from, if you uh, don't want to mess something up and just want to work on a small area, just select that out. So let's just do the other side with the eraser. And that's probably about as much as I can do with the larger erase. So I'll have to switch to a smaller eraser, and I'll change it to a size 9. And now let's see, work some details. And again, you know, I could select it either freehand or using a smart edge uh, but it's just as easy to use an eraser and just go over and on a zoom in and get what you want. He has that little bit of peach fuzz. I'm gonna later add some shading uh, that was removed from the original photograph and so I don't have to be perfect there because the shading is gonna be pretty close to what it is already. Let's use a small 7 and get some of that yellow out from uh, in between his hair that was from the background of the original image. I'm also going to remove some of that from that haze on the top there, but I'm going to skip ahead. I'm leaving a little bit of that haze that was actual lines, and I'll use the color changer to change those lines because they were hair. Here I'm going to use the clone tool. Now when you right click on the clone tool, you set an X, and that's your starting point. And as you left click, you're dragging that starting point around, or I should say your uh, copy from. And what it does is it'll take anything where it's under the X and it'll put it over to the other uh, where you're dragging it. And it'll actually clone the entire line. And so the idea is to put that X uh, in appropriate location 
that's close to the color you want and it'll copy all of the textures as you go not just a solid color so clone tools are very handy and of course if you wanted to give someone a third eye you would just click on the eyeball and then just color it right in the middle of their forehead give them a I think that would, might be useful for a senior photograph I don't know maybe not alright so now what I've done is I need to fade his hair to make it blend in a little bit and make it not stand out so much and maybe even it out so what I did is I used the eraser tool on very small hardness very small um, opacity maybe 10 or a 7 and I'm just gonna fade those edges until um, not too much but if you had any kind of strength it would just fade them out now what I want to do is I want to actually shade so rather than just choosing black I use the um, the eyedropper to take some black from his chin shading and made that into the color for the uh, for the airbrush and of course you have to have the right layer selected in this case it's the background and now we can just use our airbrush there and as we airbrush around the line very nicely putting in some of that same shade color that was under his chin that's appropriate for the photograph maybe go a little bit more around the face try and blend it in and a little bit more on the other side and uh, you know you if you use a lower level of shading you go over it twice and if you use it higher you hope that you got it perfect and a little bit more on his shoulder and I think it looks pretty good so let's zoom out a little bit alright so what I want to do now is I want to use the color changer to change the background you saw the original picture had a gray well that's what's gonna happen and I got that gray from his eye color and I think that's very appropriate to use someone's eye color to make the background it makes their eyes pop it makes them stand out better so I selected that gray now I'm going to use the color changer and with one click change the entire background um, you don't need to have close tolerances there because I want the entire background to change um, the foreground image is not on that background image so everything will change there um, it keeps the same variations the same cloudiness of that background and it looks very good so there you go but I'm gonna use the color changer like I said on those little yellow wisps of hair and because there's little bits of yellow in other parts of the image I'm just gonna make a selection I guess I'll use freehand because there really isn't much to smart edge around and I'll just make a nice little freehand selection there of his head and zoom in and what I'll do is I'll use the color changer and the pick tool um, I'm sorry I should say the eyedropper to select some brown and find a color that's good there now the color changer and now we'll zoom in and I'll just look at that yellow and just try and click on the yellow now if I click on the brown it'll change the brown so you know you might miss and have to undo and you might miss and hit something else and just keep clicking until all the yellow little wisps of hair that are in that selected area are the color that you want um, there see that just darkened it and that worked and there we're good undo the selection so I can look at it zoom out again so that should make the completed video um, the background does look a little more blotchy in the video than it really is I'll show you a copy of it now um, if you'd like to get a copy of that background you can visit me on the infosheets.com